live from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We're joined by Josh Kahn. He is the General Manager Platform ServiceNow. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE again. Yeah, really <laughs> excited to be here. Thanks for being here and thanks for being part of our event. Thank you, it's been a lot of fun. Newly minted. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes, congrats on the recent promotion. So tell us about your new role. Yeah, so, so I run the platform business unit. Um, we use the word platform a lot of different ways at, at ServiceNow, and I think we're trying to get a little bit more clear about that, but on the one hand, our platform is the core foundation that all of our applications and our customers' applications are built on. It's also um, a way that independent software vendors and our customers can build, build their own applications, and so what my group is trying to do is really be more thoughtful and more structured about how we go about gathering those requirements from our customers and our independent software vendor partners, and make sure we're building, bringing the products to market that meet their needs, and that we're doing all of the things across the board as a company we need to do to make them successful. Because there's, um, there's a lot that goes into long-term customer success from the sales teams to the se solutions consultants to professional services and the customer success management team. So we're, we're bringing all of those things to make sure that as our customers are building applications, we're helping them be successful. I remember we had Eric Brynjolfsson and, and Andy McAfee on and, and they were making a point, this is you know, years ago when they wrote their, I think, most recent book, they were saying platforms beat products. And we're like, okay, what do you mean? Look, you can make a great living doing products, but plat we are entering a platform era. It reminds me of the old Scott McNeely, car dealers versus car makers. If you want to be a car maker in this day and age, unfortunately Sun Microsystems never became that car maker, but, but you've got to have a platform. Yep. What is, what's your perspective on all that? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think the, um, every customer I talk to is looking for fewer, more strategic vendors and partners. And they're really saying, hey, be a strategic partner to me. They're, digital transformation is everywhere, disruption is everywhere, and they're saying, hey, we need a few people we can really count on to help us build a strategy and execute on that strategy to get to the, you know, the next place. And, um, you know, Isolated, independent pieces of software tend to have a hard time becoming one of those strategic vendors. And I think the more um, you can be thought of as a platform, the more different kinds of workloads run on, on the same common shared infrastructure that um, provide shared data services, that can provide simple ways to get work across uh, each other, the more value that you can bring and the more uh, you can be thought of in that strategic partner so realm. So you guys are a platform of platforms, we use that terminology a lot. And I think it's, there's no question that with, for a lot of the C-level executives, particularly the CIOs that I talk to, you are becoming, ServiceNow is becoming that a strategic platform provider. Who else is in there? I mean, let's throw some names. IBM because of its huge services business in certain industries for sure. SAP because of its massive e ERP estate. I mean, I don't know, Oracle, maybe because it's, but there's a di feels different, but maybe in some cases, but who do you see as yeah, I think, I think, um, your peers? In yeah, the, the, the category of players that are in this space are really people that are investing big in the cloud and investing big in intelligence and, and automation. And I think a lot of times automation can have kind of a negative connotation to it, but um, we really believe that automation can be used to serve people in the workplace and to make the world of work better for people not just make the world of work work without people. And so, um, you know, when you look around at the, the people that are moving into that strategic realm, it's cloud players, people who are providing either cloud infrastructure or cloud functions, you know, a, a wide set of microservices capabilities, um, in people providing applications, software as a service that start to cover a broader and broader portfolio. I mean, clearly, um, Workday is, a, is a thought of oftentimes as a, a strategic partner to their customers because they provide a human capital management capability that's, that's broader than just being a, a data repository. You know, Salesforce is clearly a, a strategic partner um, to the sales and marketing organizations. And the reality, though, is a lot of work that happens in the enterprise cuts across these things. And right. so there's an opportunity for us to work with with the sales forces and the Workdays and the Googles and the Am uh, Amazon Web Services of the world to help bring all of those things together. So I think you know, what, what customers want is not only strategic technology providers, but strategic technology pr providers that'll work with each other John to Donna solve customer uh, problems. Uh, John Donahoe on, on, I guess it was Tuesday, was saying we're very comfortable being that, that horizontal Absolutely. layer. We don't have to be you know, the, the top layer, although 
I would observe that the more applications you develop, the more interesting the whole landscape becomes. Yeah, I, well I think that's absolutely true. I think the, um, we're in the early stages of this, right? If you look at the amount of money that's spent in IT in the enterprise sector, and then you kind of start adding up all of these areas that I just mentioned, cloud and SaaS, and it's still a very small amount of that overall spend. So clearly, big legacy technology vendors are incredibly relevant still today. But um, the, the challenge they'll have is making sure they stay relevant as this you know, tide shifts to more cloud, more intelligence, uh, more automation in the workplace. I wonder if you could walk us through the process that you go through when you are working closely with customers, collaborating, trying to figure out what their problems are and solve them, and then also solve the problems they don't even know they have, yeah. but that you can provide solutions for. Yeah, actually it's amazing because in a lot of cases, the innovation, and, and this has been a phenomenal week because I, I've gotten to meet with so many customers and see what they're doing. And what, what tends to happen with ServiceNow is the IT organization, oftentimes it starts there. The IT organization brings it in for IT service management. And people start using that to request things that they need from IT. And they, they very quickly say, man, I, I have a process that would really benefit from exactly what you just did. Like, can you build my application on that? Can you build? And so there starts to become this tidal wave of people asking the IT organization if they can start hosting applications on the platform. I'll give you, um, one example uh, from a company called Cox Automotive. Donna Woodruff, uh, who's the, the, um, an innovation leader there and leads the ServiceNow platform team, found a, um, a process where they had a set of safety checks. They do at all these remote sites as a part of car auctions. And it was a very spreadsheet driven process um, that involved a lot of people doing manual checks, but it also had you know, regulatory implications, um, insurance implications, and you know, workplace uh, happiness implications. And they were able to take this, put it on service now, and automate uh, a lot of that process, make it faster, you know, I should say digitize it. So you still need the people going through and doing the checks, but they were able to digitize it and make that person's job that much better. And so, you know, these, these applications are all over the place. They're in shared email inboxes, they're um, in Excel spreadsheets, they're in legacy applications, and the, the, we don't actually have to go drive the, the innovation and the ideas. They end up coming to the, the ServiceNow platform owners in, in, these, in our customers. I'd like you to comment on some of the advantages of the platform and maybe some of the challenges that you face. When I think about enterprise software, um, I would generally characterize enter enterprise software as it's not a great user experience. Oftentimes, enterprise software products don't play with other, well with, with other software products. They're highly complex. Oftentimes there's lots of customization required, which means it's really hard to go from you know, one state to another. Those are things that you generally don't suffer from. Yeah. I mean, are, there, are there others that give you advantages, and what are maybe some of the challenges that you face? Yeah, so I think, I think it's true. I, enterprise software, you, have, you used to have to train yourself to it, right? It's like, hey, we're going to roll out a new system. What, how are we going to train all the users? Yeah. But you don't do that with the software we use in the consumer world, right? I mean, you, you download it from the app store and you start using it. If you can't figure it out, it's not going it's not gonna, it's not gonna, to go. You ain't going to use it. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. So we put a lot of that, that thought process from the consumer world into our technology, but not just the technology we provide. We're trying to make it easier for our customers to then provide that on to their internal and external customers as well. So things like the mobile application builder that we showed earlier today that's coming in Madrid, it's an incredibly simple way to build a, a beautiful mobile application for almost anything in the workplace. And again, as, as I was saying before, that a lot of the ideas for applications come from people in the workplace. We've got to make it easy enough for them to not only identify what the application potential is, but then build something that's amazing. So, you know, what we're trying to do is put a lot of those design concepts not just into the end products we sell, but into tools and technology that are part of the platform and the platform business unit so that our customers can build something just like it, uh, you know, in terms of experience, usability, simplicity, and power, without having to have a lot of developers, uh, as many developers as we do. You and, I, you and I have known each other for a number of years now, yeah. and just we observed the other day, you know, off camera, that you've been forced to, into a lot of, you know, challenges, and, and I say forced, welcomed a lot of challenges. <laughs> I love yeah. it, I love yeah. it. Right, I mean, it's like, hey, I'll take that, yeah. no problem. Um, and you've had a, a variety of experiences at, at large companies. Things you've learned, um, opportunities ahead, maybe advice yeah. you'd give for others that, yeah, I think, um, that like the hard stuff. <laughs> this is, I'll tell you, I think one of the biggest things I've learned um, here, particularly at ServiceNow, is just the importance of staying focused on customers. 
rather than competitors. I think a lot of times when you're in business roles or strategy roles, you can really think a lot about, oh, who, who am I competing against? And you can forget that you really just need to solve the customer's problem better, you know, as well as you possibly can. Be there for them when they need it. Uh, have something that's compelling that addresses their needs and stay laser focused on what works for them. And um, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to be successful. So I think that's a, that's a strategy we've really tried to, to take uh, to heart at ServiceNow is put the customers at the center of everything we do. And um, you know, we don't worry that much about competitors. And, and, and you know, they're out there and we know they're there and, and we study them, but it's really the customer that gets us up every morning. You know, it's interesting. I, I've had this uh, as well as John Furrier has uh, this conversation with Andy Jassy a lot. And they're like yeah. insanely focused on the customer. He says pretty much the exact same thing. Even though he'll say, if we get into a competitive situation, we'll take on oh, anybody. Yeah. But, but his point was, both, both methods can work. Uh, your former company, uh, EMC, I would put into the very competitive, you know, uh, yeah. Oracle, I think, is the same way. Microsoft, uh, maybe used to be, maybe that's changing, but to a great extent, would rip your face off if you yeah. were a competitor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, my question is this, is, is the efficacy of the the head-to-head the -head competitive drive, you know, a, a, as, um, effective as it used to be, and are we seeing a change a, a, toward a customer-centric success model? I, I, think, I think there's two things going on. I think one is, um, once a market really kind of reaches maturity, the competitive dynamic really heats up. Because right? you got to gain share. Yeah, yeah. you got to gain share. <laughs> and, and it's, um, you know, today in, in the cloud world, in the, in the intelligence world, you know, there's just so much opportunity that you can just, you know, you can keep going for a long time before you even bump into people. Uh, I think in mature markets that's different. So I think a lot of times, you know, partly at, um, at EMC, that was one of the dynamics we had. It was a very, very mature market, on-premise on storage. And so, you know, it was, uh, you had to go, you had to go head to head um, right. every time. Um, but I think there's also, you know, the, the changing tenor of, of the world. You know, people, people, people have a lot less, um, they, they don't care for that kind of dialogue as much anymore. They don't, they don't like it when you come in and talk bad about anybody else, you know? And so I think, I think there's both dynamics that one, in, in the markets we're in, they're, they're so new, they're growing so fast that it's not as important, but also there's just not that, pe people don't care for it. And it's, um, it doesn't, I don't think it helps. You're, it, it, if anything, sometimes it makes people wonder if they ought to be, Oh, well, I didn't think about talking to them. Maybe we should go call uh, the competitor you just mentioned. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> no. So that, all that said, um, when you get into a fight, you got to fight hard and, and you got to come with uh, come got to come with the best stuff. So I think that that's that's the reality. Great answer. Yeah, it's a good note to end on. Thanks so much, yeah. Josh, for coming on the cube again. It's been a real pleasure having you here. All right, thank you. Really appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. We will have more from ServiceNow Knowledge 18 just after this.